Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the game plan, a charged game plan today. I've got so much technical information on the charts, on the data coming out here. We have a ton to cover. My name again, Gareth Soloway here at Verified Investing Studios. I'm pumped if you can't tell. All right, let's get started here. Right over, nice catch by the way, <laughs> right over to the charts. We've got big things going on here. First and foremost, we're going to just quickly look at what's driving this market today. And I'm going to get, by the way, into the market blast. I want to go over that. But I wanted to show you this because this is a big deal. The yields, this is the 10-year yield, and it's breaking out above this level. Now, has it confirmed? No. But ultimately, look at this area here, here, and here, and look at where the 10-year yield is trading right now at 4.389%. That is a big deal, all right, guys? Again, what does that imply? It implies the Federal Reserve is likely, or at least markets are starting to anticipate, less cuts. Now, I have a, I have a hypothesis on this. I think the fact that we're seeing oil up again today, we're seeing gold up, commodities are moving up, gasoline, the chart of gasoline's breaking out of a bull pattern here. If we see uh, commodities continue to go up, it's basically going to raise inflation. It just is. I mean, if you see oil, gasoline, all these things start to go higher, guess what? Inflation's going up. That's going to handcuff the Fed. I've said that for the longest time. All right, what we're going to do now, guys, is we're going to get into the market blast. Let's get right into it here. So we have our morning market blast on verifiedinvesting.com. We're going to scroll down to the keys of the day. Notice I zoomed in today, so I think you guys can probably read this a little bit clearer. Yields, again, are potentially breaking out above the 4.34% resistance level, currently trading at 4.377. That was when I wrote this, but it obviously is a little bit higher even now. We actually touched 4.4%. Next up, what does this imply? It implies the Fed can cut or will be able to cut less if inflation continues up and the yields are telling us that that might be the case. Futures are selling sharply this morning on the NASDAQ and the S&P. We're going to look at those charts in a minute. But again, this is continuing to be an inverse reaction to the 10-year yield. 10-year yield going up. We even saw the dollar screaming and breaking and confirming yesterday. These are all negatives for the stock market and for crypto. And by the way, we'll talk about Bitcoin dropping tremendously today. Okay, next up, oil high higher again today and gasoline attempting to break out from that bull flag. The higher the commodity goes, the higher inflation goes. That's just the way it works, right? So this may explain why rates are being pushed up. Think about that logically. This is my key thesis of the day, that as long as you see commodities going up, it's going to mean yields are going to have to go up to counteract the inflation pressure that that rising commodity basket has on inflation, right? All right, so again, now having said that, there's a caveat. But wait, there's more. What we have to look here, guys, is to take a look at what's coming out today. So the jolts data. The jolts data being released at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And again, the expectations are 8.76 million job openings. Again, jolts stands for job openings, all right? So it's how many openings are there. As of last month, we had 8.86 million. That's about 1.3 jobs for every single person. Now, that doesn't tell us if it's part-time or full-time, keep in mind. So just be aware of that as well. But either way, markets are expecting 8.76 any number that comes in, let's say, below 8.5 or especially towards 8 million, the markets will likely see a rally because yields will pull back. So as much as yields are up today, and we talked about that chart just a minute ago when we started, we have to remember that if the job openings show weakness, meaning a lot less job openings, that jump in the yields, which is unconfirmed as a breakout right now, we might see it reverse. Now, if it comes in stronger, let's say we come in at 9 million job openings, Ho, ho, ho. Watch out because markets will get crushed on that and yields will probably go well beyond 4.4% on the 10 year. All right, couple stocks in motion today. PVH is down 22% today, guys. 22% as the market, again, this is the fashion retailer that owns Tommy Hilfiger, Calvin Klein. They gave poor guidance. They cited a tough macro environment. Again, this is something that I've kind of been keying in on this, guys, and I'm going to talk about some charts in a minute. But we're seeing more and more companies missing or lowering guidance because they're saying that the macro 
picture is not good. Now, that doesn't just include outside the U.S. These are a lot of these brands are internal in the U.S. as well, and it does appear consumers are starting to reach their limit. There's only so much money you can put on credit cards before the credit card company says, whoa, you can't put any more on these credit cards. EV company, Canoe, Go EV is the symbol, dropping 27% on disappointing guidance. This has just been a tough environment for EV companies. There's no doubt about it. The key here is support is at $2, all right? And by the way, you can see the support on PVH, $93. I'll be trading that in the live trading room on Verified Investing. If you go to verifiedinvesting.com, by the way, it's under live trading rooms, and it's the Apex Live Day Trading Room. That's where I'm trading with my, my uh, head traders, Ben, as well as Dr. B and we had more winners yesterday just printing money left and right love it okay next up let's take a look we got to find out who's winning the $300 credit to um, a a verified investing so let's do it right now let's get rocking and rolling here we go thank you guys for commenting on the positives and negatives that you saw on the website I take it to heart a lot of good reaction guys I'm so happy that you guys understand and understand that I'm trying to build something that's for you guys, and and by default, it's for me. It's what I want. It's what I need as a trader, and therefore, I hope it's what you guys like as well. It's all one house. The winner today, uh, Philip, Philip Xavier, 1041, $300 credit to VI, guys, $300 credit. Please reach out to Lawton at Verified Investing. Remember, you have to be following the YouTube for Verified Investing or the Twitter for Verified Investing to be to win. So essentially, if you're not, then this would be default. Go back into the pot for someone else to win. Okay, in just a little bit, we're going to spin that wheel again. So we're going to get into another winner as always, guys. Let's get now to the chart. So the 10-year yield is doing this. We saw this already. Let's look at the dollar. So the dollar, guys, actually confirmed yesterday. Now, the dollar's pulling back a little bit because honestly, look at the big move on the dollar. But the key to me is it closed above and it confirmed. So what this tells me is, as a technician of the charts, is that now this becomes big support. It was resistance when it would come up, it would hit this level over and over again and pull back. Now it's closed above, confirmed. Now if it pulls back, this becomes support for a potential move to the upside. Now always remember, can these things fail? Meaning can you confirm back below? The answer is yes, it's all a probability game. So once you confirm above, I'd say about 75% chance that this level on a pullback holds and goes higher like that. Still leaves 25% for it to break back below. The beauty of it is, is if it confirms below, you know right away, okay, confirm below, That means it's a failed breakout, and then you would probably expect you to go all the way down to this lower level. Let's check in on the S&P 500, which just continues. Look at this, guys. This is pre-market right now. Look at this rollover in the S&P 500. We closed right here yesterday. So again, this is a big move, and this is all because of fear leading into these job reports later this week. Again, jolts today, ADP private sector data tomorrow, Friday, the non-farm payrolls and unemployment. And again, all of this is going to be a determining factor. If it's strong, if it's solid numbers, I don't see how the Fed cuts three times this year, even though that's what uh, Jerome Powell said a week, two weeks ago, right? It just doesn't make sense. Why would you cut when the economy is so strong and inflation is upticking? It would just be a negative and probably cause inflation to go even higher. All right, so that's what we have there. Remember, guys, I've been giving you literally the game plan on this every single day. What do we know about the S&P 500, the wedge pattern? Did it confirm? What does it mean if it confirms? Did it break and confirm? The answer is yes. We had confirmation here, couple sideways days around the holiday, and you know what's starting to happen? Exactly what the probabilities were telling us were starting to turn down. This is this is technical analysis, guys. It's it's astrology for everybody. I normally it says for men, but we'll be unbiased here. It is amazing stuff. Does it work all the time? Heck no. But you know what? If I can get an edge, I mean that's think about that. As an investor, you guys are watching. How many times do you get in a position and it goes the opposite way you you think the instant you get in? It's almost like it's a rigged game against you. Technical analysis, it doesn't make it perfect. You're still going to have losses. I still have plenty of losses, but at least my probabilities are now in the win column, and that is what matters. Okay. So right into this, we know that we are now moving lower today. The S&P or the spiders are down significantly. NASDAQ 100, holy cow, look at this drop on the NASDAQ 100, guys. And remember, the NASDAQ 100, the QQQ, already confirmed like weeks ago. 
So we knew it was coming. We just had to wait, wait, get past the Easter holiday, get past all this hype and all this money flow that was coming in. And one of the things yesterday, right? So yesterday, then remember the markets were opening sharply higher and we actually had a pop initially. You know what that was? That was retail money going into 401ks, IRAs going into the market, first of the quarter, first of the month. You know what? Markets sold off from there. That's institutional exiting. It's basically, basically the institutions were using that initial month and quarter money as exit liquidity. Like that's what was happening. And look at what the markets are doing now. I mean, it's all starting to play out per what the charts were alerting us. Okay, I want to show you this chart, guys. Well, in fact, let's go to the daily chart here. So the daily chart here, this is an interesting one. So we know we confirmed a couple weeks ago to the downside. And again, once you confirm, the bias becomes down versus up. And here it was up, right? You were staying within this, this pattern. You closed below here, never confirmed. Closed below here, never confirmed. So it was a constant kind of grind up. This is right where you confirmed. You even got a retrace to the scene of the crime. Now we're starting to come back down. So again, learn that confirmation signal. It is a game changer. Look at the transports. I posted this to members uh, last night, guys. This is a very powerful chart. This is the transportation ETF. The thought process for decades, if not for the last hundred years in the stock market, is that where the transports go, the market goes, right? Or the economy goes. And the idea is, is that if the transportation companies, like shipping companies, are starting to break lower, it's telling you there's an issue with demand from the consumer. And it's a leading indicator. Well, look at this, right? Look at this amazing chart here, a trend line that starts here back, by the way, this was October of 2023, goes right to here, here and here, and it breaks here and confirms. Now, what do we know about confirmation? When you have a line and you hammer on it, hammer on it, hammer on it, and you confirm, Oftentimes, what do you do? About 70%, 65%, 70% of the time, you retrace to the scene of the crime, and then you sell off. Well, look at that. Breaks, confirms, retraces to the scene of the crime, and look at that. We're going to start to roll over per what the charts are telling us. In addition, look at the negative divergence on the RSI. So you had price just making higher highs, right? So here's a high, here's a high, and here's a high right over here. And look at this, look at the downward slope in the RSI, right? So that's again telling us that smart money is basically slowly unloading and moving out as the transports were going up, essentially exit liquidity, just they had to do it very slowly. Think about this, over, you know, over the last few months, volume hasn't been tremendous in the markets as the markets have been going up because again, it's generally retail. Same thing goes on the other side. When you're smart money and you're unloading into this, this liquidity, you can't just dump a billion dollars in a split second because you'll crash the markets when there's not enough volume. You do it very slowly, slow and steady, just unloading little by little, gets you out, and then once, and that's where this is telling us, and then you can get that rollover and start seeing the downside in the markets as the retail money dries up. Okay. Other chart I want to go over, then we're going to spin the wheel, guys, and then we'll go right into crypto. We'll go into gold, oil, a lot of stuff to talk about. This is an amazing chart. Now, when, when, um, when we saw, when we talked about Google just a few weeks ago, I said, guys, and this was in this very game plan, I said, listen, this is a buying opportunity. There's a channel here, a parallel channel that goes back a long, long way. Look at how you close below it, but ask yourself, did you confirm? The answer is no and look at what price has done. Now, if you want to know something, I don't know if this will happen, but if Google hits this trend line right up here, does that become a long or a short? Would you expect support or resistance? This is resistance, right? And so again, nothing's perfect, but in other words, if you hit this, you would expect a pullback because again, that's what's happened in this channel. It's just literally, it's it's almost like, I almost feel like sometimes when I'm doing charts, I'm a kid with those connect the dots or, or you know, little things. You, you get one of those playbooks to play with, like my kids have them, and you just literally connect the dots. Like, oh, let's connect this dot to this dot to this dot. Oh, look at that. It, it creates a cool parallel channel. That's really all it is. I don't make things overcomplicated, right? Again, it, it's, for me, I make money in the markets by keeping it relatively simple, and it just works. It just works because I'm looking at charts, how they react, and I'm noticing pattern formations. That's all I'm doing. Okay, um, one other chart here I want to show you guys. This is WBA yesterday, so let's go to the daily chart of WBA real quick here. All right, so 
Um, just last Thursday, which was the last trading day of the of the month, we saw WBA popping on earnings, right? We had this pop on earnings here, and that was a nice move. And then yesterday, we saw this big sell candle to the downside. No news. It was just the first of the month, first of the quarter. What this was, in my opinion, now again, this is my opinion, but this was a fund that at the start of the quarter said, hey, listen, we have a few million shares or five million shares or whatever it is, we don't wanna hold this stock anymore. So they ended up dumping, and you can see it basically because there's almost no bounces on an intraday basis, right? So if you see, they dumped a bunch here, and then they just were slowly unloading the rest of the day. And then at the end of the day, they had another, let's say, a million or two million shares. And they said, you know what? We just want to be out of this at the end of the day. So dump it. And that's why. But look at how you got no bounces. And again, this is coming off positive earnings. So for me, I look at this as a potential opportunity. I say to myself, okay, it was up on good earnings just last Thursday, and then a bigger player that had no relation to fundamentals or anything else that I'm aware of, they ended up just saying, you know what, we don't really want to be in this position anymore, let's dump it, and they did. So it gives you an opportunity potentially, and I say potentially because it may obviously not play out, but I would almost guess if we look at this chart, this is your daily chart, we have a double bottom here that we pierced. I would not be surprised if assuming this entity is done unloading, right? I mean, you don't know how many shares they have, that you would probably see some sort of snap back. Now, is it gonna go back up here? I doubt it, at least not in the near term, because again, the markets are weak and you have to figure that out. But right here, WBA, which is Walgreens, you might get a little snap back back to 20 20 20 and a half dollars and that's just again for me little opportunities like this do make for a good profit on an intraday or quick swing trade opportunities all right um i think that's what i want to do there on those charts so what i next want to do is spin that wheel let's spin the wheel and find out who and um who is the winner here or, or what i shouldn't say who the winner is but tomorrow's winner will be and at the end of the stream i'll give you that question to answer that you'll have to answer remember you have to comment below the in, the verified investing video right the in the money stocks i mean the gareth soloway video not the greatest thing i'd rather you do it on the, in the verified investing let's spin it away i hope someone wins the uh winning trader series let's see come on come on all right this is three months of it says verified investing, but it's now on verifiedinvesting.com. So it's called Smart Money Trade Alerts, um, Stocks and ETFs. Three months, that's $450 in value. And again, folks, if we if someone doesn't win on the land on Kitco for 10 ounces of silver or on the winning trader series here in the next day friday we're going to give away both we'll do we'll just assume for both because i want you guys to be winning some good stuff not that not that this isn't great this is fantastic but listen we got to give away some silver we got to give away a winning trader series so thank you guys comment below i'll let you know the, the, at the end we're going to take a quick 30 seconds to thank i trust capital because i trust capital keeps the lights on here they keep me motivated because they're able to uh, we're able to afford these amazing cameras and this amazing set because we have sponsors like those players out there like um lux algo like i trust and so here's a quick 30 second break do you have an existing ira or retirement account iTrust allows you to buy and sell crypto, gold, and silver all right within your IRA. And the best part is they make it simple. All you have to do is transfer your preferable amount of USD through iTrust and then invest that into crypto or precious metals on the platform. To get access, use the link below to find out more about investing through iTrust Cap. All right, guys, we're back. Bitcoin, wow. So, this is one of those things, and I, I kind of hypothesized this yesterday, but it still was holding its bull pattern. But I said, listen, you got the weekly, the monthly, and the quarterly close above, and you know we saw all this hype on social media. Oh, every time this happens, we see like an X 100% move to the upside. And I'm like, man, if I'm the institutions, I'm just loving that thought process because that gets the last few bulls long thinking this thing is going to rip up. Wouldn't it be something if it was a rug pull, meaning Bitcoin collapsed? And we know that the stock market is connected here because it's a risk on, risk off situation. Well, sure enough, today down to 65,000. Now we have to see where today closes. And granted, it still closed above on the weekly the quarter, the monthly and the quarterly. So we want to watch next 
Sunday night, but you can't deny that this is not good, at least for the bull flag, unless we come back in this range here. And you could even, to be honest, we could even lower the line just a little bit to include a little bit of those tails. But unless we somehow rally back into that range, today you could fail the bull flag. Failed bull flags are usually not good situations because again, failed bull flags result in downside moves of significance more often than not. Now again, the weekly, the monthly, the quarterly, we have to monitor. Those are still in play. Got to respect them, of course. But again, what a drop here in terms of the chart. Now, I do want to show you something real quick, guys. Where, again, am I looking so closely at? And you guys know this, right? I mean, you guys probably know this by heart at this point. But look, this is a this is bigger deal to me. This. Now, again, is a close below significant? Yes. Is it the end-all, be-all signal of a breakdown? No, because it hasn't confirmed. You're above this line. It would have to confirm below. So even if it closes below, yes, it weakens. It opens the door for confirmation. But I would really want to see con a confirming move in the next day or so to really say, wow, we've now broken this trend line. And remember what I said to you guys. I said, listen, you have this here, right? That's your big line there. That's your double top. That's your high pivot. But then this line here is the big one. Like this, you, I said in, in pretty much every game plan, you do not want to see price start getting below this line. Now, again, I want to see confirmation so that we actually have that probability really heavily favoring. But if that happens, if we confirm, you'll have a stop here at 60 and change. But then, you know what? I've said it for the longest time. Anywhere between, basically anywhere between 50 and 52 and 49 is probably where we're headed. Remember, 52 is this sideways consolidation. That's going to be support. 49 was the high of the spot ETF. Now, we have a long day to go in Bitcoin, but certainly, does this perk my ears up? Does this potentially say, wait, there could be some volatility for some trading opportunities? It certainly does. Another chart I highlighted to you just the other day, I think we went over this yesterday, this chart of INJ, I said, guys, the more you hit on a line, remember this, right? When you hammer on a line over and over again, it's the equivalent of you ramming into a locked door. The first time, the second time, the third time, you may not bust that door down. You keep hitting that door, eventually the, the lock gets weak, the hinges get weak, and it falls over or it breaks in. That's exactly what you have here, right? Look at this. I mean, just over and over and over, eventually that door gives way. So now we're in a position where INJ likely headed down to that level there. Be aware of that, all right? So again, your target right now about 25-ish, give or take, maybe 26. If that breaks, then you're heading all the way down to 19 down here, this 19 level. But again, right now, respect the 25, 26 level. Ethereum, look at where we're heading, guys. This is going to be a big test for Ethereum. So we have a trend line here on Ethereum from this point to this point to this point, right? So right off the bat was key. Look at how price chopped there and then broke out, retraced, and then look at what we're coming down to. So big support coming up around 32.50 or so, 32.30 on Ethereum. If it closes below, same rules apply. It needs to confirm. You confirm below, you're going down here. All right, that's your next big support right there on Ethereum. All right, let's go on to gold real quick here, and we'll talk about oil and nat gas. Gold just continues to go higher. I gave you guys my upside short-term target. Remember, there's a difference between my upside short-term and long-term. Long-term meaning, you know, the next 12 months is still over $2,500 per ounce. Short-term, I got to respect. It's all about just respecting, right? You know, it doesn't mean it has to stop here, but the probabilities start to sway. You get the 1980 high. You connect it to the 2011 high, and we're right up here. I think this is around $2,330. So if we get there and we're very, getting close to $2,300, that would be a level where you would expect a pullback. Watch today the jolts number. Like literally Bitcoin is going to move on jolts. The gold chart, the dollar, the yields, the stock market, things. It didn't used to be that the jolts actually mattered that much. It's only now because of what we're seeing with the Federal Reserve. Literally the market's hinging on every data point on inflation or jobs that's going to sway the Fed one way or another. Here's your oil chart, guys. Pretty wild. So again, we're now hitting that 85. 85 was my upper range of resistance. This is a level I gave all the way back here when we were trading in this line. We talked about this bull flag. And again, let me just talk about this here. 
So we can see it right here real quick, right? So you basically had this pattern and there. And I said, all right, listen, this looks like a bull flag. 85, then I kind of said 84 to 85 because again this, now it is above this level, so we gotta monitor it. Does it confirm? But again, my guess is we will see a pullback in oil, if not. So I mean, this is the kicker again. If oil keeps going higher, like I said, it's gonna raise inflation. CPI, PPI aren't gonna come down if you see oil and gasoline going higher. Speaking of which, let me show you gasoline real quick here. We don't have much time left before I gotta get to my trading floor. But if we look at this, look at this pattern here, right? Now, gasoline's starting to stall, but you have a bull flag right here, and it's trying to break out. Watch that closely as well. That's a big inflation factor as well. Lastly, natural gas. Natural gas had that beautiful fake out of the wedge pattern, which again, no confirmation. It rips the other way. I've seen that a million times. Again, breaks below, closes below. The, the people that don't know TA would be like, oh, this is a breakdown, ah, you know? And then what does it do? Just pulls the rug right the other way and goes right up. Today we are pulling back a little bit. Um, still, you haven't confirmed above this downsloping line, so we need to see that. If you pull back, this is only minor support. Until it confirms, that's minor support, not major support. Holy cow, what a day. All right, I gotta get going, guys, because you know what? I've gotta get on the trading floor and make some money in the live, the Apex Live day trading room. Check out Verified Investing, guys. Check out all the offers. Literally, my services, which are now called Smart Money, Smart Money Commodities, Smart Money Crypto, Smart Money Stocks and ETFs. I'm literally posting like every day, except if I'm sleeping. There's constant posts, there's daily videos, there's trade signals, all of that stuff. Check out the Trader's Edge as well, or Crypto Edge, I think it's called. Um, and again, that's by Paul Sampson. He's crushing it. I saw like five trades already out there from him on that. So go check that out. But thank you guys for tuning in. Love you all. Comment below. One question, guys. Comment below if you think the, the jolts, well, no, let's do the jobs number on Friday. Do the jobs numbers come in below 200,000 for job gains or above 200,000? All right, so below, and this is the, the, the jobs numbers, initial claims on Friday, not initial claims, excuse me, the job report, above or below 200,000. Have a great one, guys. Take care.